How's it going, Gray Boys? It is time for the bowl season. Unfortunately for us, there was not enough chaos at the end of the season, so I don't think that we'll be sneaking into the playoffs. But currently, we're slated for a game against Old Dominion in this quick lane bowl, and I'm almost certainly going to change that if the game or if the uh, utility tool somehow doesn't do it for us. We are the number 15 team in the country at 11 and 2. There's no way I'm going to play a middling 6 and 6 Monarchs uh, for our bowl game. That's just a, a really lame way to end the season. So first things first, let's get the utility tool loaded up. And we can go ahead and set up our college football playoffs and see who it is that makes it. Obviously, we're doing an eight team playoff because that's the way that we do it. And just going by the selection process in this tool, uh, I don't really see how we could sneak in. So we can load our file in. And there it is. There's our playoffs set in stone. Uh, we do get a little bit of interesting looks here. Two teams that don't typically belong. Uh, our first matchup, the Orange Bowl, we have the number one seed, Auburn. After winning the SEC, they get to play the number eight seed, the uh, the last at-large team to make it in, uh, in Notre Dame. So that's an interesting Orange Bowl matchup. The way that Notre Dame plays in these dynasties on NCAA 14, I wouldn't be surprised if they could do something, but Auburn looks seriously hot right now. Uh, down below them on the same side of the bracket in the Peach Bowl is a very interesting matchup. Uh, USC is playing against Georgia Southern. And I want to say that it was Georgia Southern that played four FCS teams in their season. So I think maybe we would deserve to be above them. But, uh, you know, if somehow I could schedule four FCS teams and get ranked that high... Uh, I would let us play in the playoffs, so we're going to let it stand. On the other side in the Cotton Bowl is Purdue in Texas. Boilermakers undefeated. We're sitting at number one for the longest time, but got jumped by Auburn uh, because they didn't play uh, as great of a team in their SEC championship game because I think Auburn played Florida. So uh, speaking of Florida, they are the number six seed in the Fiesta Bowl against an Army team. Black Knights uh, in independent, I think, for us still. But they get the three seed, and they'll get a chance to prove that they belong. So let's go ahead and set this in stone. And then we can change our bowl matchup. If we look, yeah, there we are in the quick lane bowl. So the question is, do we find a bowl game that uh, we go against another ranked opponent and kind of swap ourselves out? Or do I just put us against an opponent that looks fun? Right off the bat, I am seeing some teams that I would like to play against. And I think what we're going to do is not fair to Pitt, but we'll change things around a little bit. I do see Coastal and Duke playing down here in the Tax Slayer Bowl. Uh, but I think that I want to save our first matchup against Coastal for when we're a slightly better team. So instead, uh, we're going to play the number 17 Gophers in Minnesota. We'll make it a tough top 20 matchup for ourselves. So we can edit the matchup, click on Pitt. I can figure out where Eastern is and we'll swap that. But now it seems Pitt has gotten the short end of the stick. So we are going to make, uh, I don't know, Virginia Tech upset? No, I was thinking Virginia Tech could swap with them and they could play Utah. But that seems still too fair of a matchup. So here's what we'll do. Uh, Idaho Potato Bowl. We're going to move Ohio to play Old Dominion in our place. That way it's still a MAC opponent. And then Pitt will have to go deal with them. So uh, we move to the Duke Mayo's Bowl. That way we can get a good Mayo bath if we win the game, which, ooh, how great would that be? Uh, and then Ohio goes to the Quick Lane Bowl and Pitt goes to the famous, or the Idaho Potato Bowl. And that's that. Let's go ahead and save it. So we can now load in to this uh, game and there we go against Minnesota what can we do here this will be a really really important game for us I don't think oh maybe it has updated it's uh, us favored to win Gophers went nine and three on the season they're a B minus team so not really as good as I expected although they played uh, much more difficult opponents and actually uh, I'm just gonna spoil it right now we're moving into the Big Ten next year so we will be playing them in conference we won't be expanding the Big Ten, though, so I'll let you guys kind of try to guess who it is that we're going to be bumping down to the MAC. How did Minnesota do this year? They beat 6-6 uh, six six Oregon State, 
which is a good Oregon State team by their standards. Beat Marshall by 10. They were able to beat Ohio State on the road, but this is an Ohio State who in our universe is pretty bad. They went 4-8 and eight on the year. Uh, beat Indiana, so started 4-0. Probably were feeling pretty confident. Then lost in overtime to Iowa. Won in overtime against Northwestern. Beat Mississippi State. Lost to a number nine Michigan. Beat Illinois. Lost to Purdue. Beat Nebraska. Beat Wisconsin. So there are three losses. One comes in overtime and the other two come to top 10 teams. Honestly, that's a pretty productive and solid season for a nine and three team in Minnesota. We did have one more thing to look at that we hadn't looked at before. We know the Heisman winner, but we don't know all Americans and award winners. So I'm not certain if we have anything or if Minnesota has anything popping up there. There's an Eastern Michigan, Aaron Lane, the uh, 73 overall senior middle linebacker. We will miss him, but hopefully we can replace him next year. That's huge to have a first team All-American and in true Teal Boys fashion, Coastal has a first team All-American return man. On the second team list, uh, again, any Minnesota or any Eastern Michigan? Oh, 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 oh! Corey Poole makes it up there. So does Samuel Thomas and Chris Fox. So our secondary really impressed voters this year as they, again, didn't play the greatest wide receivers or quarterbacks, but they got the job done well enough, according to whoever votes on these All-America list. Uh, that's good news for us. Good XP, uh, if nothing else. Freshman-wise, I don't know if we played a lot of freshmen, but I guess we must have. The left end, Troy Carter, I do remember that that was a big pickup in our recruiting. He will continue to be big no matter what. 6'4", 250 pounds as, uh, as a pass rusher, but uh, maybe he should put on a little bit more weight. Clinton Whitfield also sitting there, also going to be important. That's our defensive tackle. Other than that, nothing uh, on that freshman All-American list. Well, if we had that many guys on uh, the All-American ones, how about the All-Mac? I would expect quite a bit. We have our left tackle, Drew Anderson, our center, Marcus Brown, our right tackle, Terry Curtis. There's Troy Carter and Clinton Whitfield and Eric Lane and Corey Poole, Frank Blair, Samuel Thomas, Chris Fox, Luke Clark. Oh my goodness, I'm going to run out of breath because there are just so many players. Uh, a couple more offensive linemen in the second team. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, my goal was kind of to build a really good uh, set of lines, you know, offensive and defensive. And if this is how we're starting, I'm feeling pretty confident. Next step for those guys is to start winning some awards because it didn't really go well for us. Nobody for us on the Maxwell, the Walter Camp, man, Army cleaning up there with the, uh, what he won the Heisman as well for the Bedrick. Not us, not anybody we care about. <laughs> it's probably going to be the same for all of these. Uh, Joe Frank, wow, he's got a, a full trophy case after just one season with all the awards that he's won. And again, I see nothing. I thought that we had one guy. I think it might be for the Thorpe that we had somebody as a finalist. Did he win? No, it is Samuel Thomas, the free safety. He finishes seventh in the voting for that award, which is... Honestly, pretty solid. It's a shame we'll lose him. The 81 overall uh, free safety is a redshirt senior, so we will certainly miss him, but that's just the way it goes. Coastal wins the uh, kicking award in the Groza. Uh, they didn't punt much, though, so no guy, and the Jet has got to go to Ian Bain, so he's got that. I'm honestly surprised we don't see Corey Poole. I mean, we did have Stan Williams returning uh, for a little bit at the start of the season, but then when we put Corey Poole in, I mean, he took multiple punts to the house. That's got to count for something, but just no love from the voters this year. Well, I might as well scroll through uh, a list of some bowl matchups. Uh, we won't necessarily stop to look at any, but, uh, you know, a lot of people, I think, find this really interesting and want to know how their favorite team is doing. Uh, unfortunately, I just don't have the time in these episodes to really focus on every single matchup, uh, but there's a lot of really interesting ones like this. Uh, two, Oregon State had, by their standards, a good season. They're going to play Oklahoma, who had a terrible season in the Alamo Bowl. So which team is going to want to win that one more? Is Oklahoma going to try and avoid being embarrassed? Or is Oregon State really hoping to win a bowl game? Um, 
couple of these are obviously placeholders, but some really cool matchups in the playoffs. You know, it's not like we're seeing too, uh, too realistic of stuff, but it's also not too outlandish either. All right, we've talked enough. Let's, uh, let's get this one underway. Minnesota, an 83 overall to our 72. They have an 84 offense and an 83 defense. To say that I'm scared, uh, well, I don't know. I think that that might be an understatement, but <laughs> we'll see. I'm curious to know if you guys are confident in us winning this game. We've been firing on all cylinders the past few games of this season, but again, it was against Mac opponents. So having to step up and play a really good Minnesota team uh, could cause some problems. Man, I love Minnesota's uniforms, by the way. The revamp team did a great job with these. I think we got to go with something that has Goldie on the helmet though, because those uh, those helmets are so fantastic. Not sure if I like the maroon or the chrome Goldie face more, or the yellow full Goldie. I think I like the Goldie face, but look at how many options they have. I mean, honestly, it's so tempting. I think we just have to go with the, uh, the full home. What does the anthracite pants look like? Eh, I'm not a huge fan of that, but maybe the maroon pants. Yeah, let's go with the maroon pants. I'll change it up a little bit from the home, but keep, uh, you know, most of what makes their uniforms good. So coming into this game, offensively, we look awful. And they have a very solid defense again against much better opponents that we've played. Uh, and offensively, they look pretty mediocre, but we have a really good defense. But again, it's against lesser opponents. So these numbers, I'm not entirely sure what they're going to mean. All I know is that I expect our offense to struggle in this matchup. So we'll just hope that we get the good Albert Johnson, the one that can throw some accurate passes, and then maybe we'll have a chance to win this game. Uh, these top players I know for sure are next year's uh, best players. So whoever their actual top players are, this ain't them. And they're still much better than we can expect. And this is where it kind of hurts. Just at that 80 overall mark, I guess the good news is that we have these guys as a base to build on next year. Injury-wise, uh, well, we bring our one injured player back, but they have a right guard out for the season with a foot fracture. And before we get into this game, I'm just going to launch out maybe a little reminder that if you would like to rename one of the recruits that is joining in our recruiting class for this upcoming season, uh, consider becoming a member because you can not only change the name of your recruits, but it's also a tremendous way to help support this channel and the more support that we get the more i can do well it is a pretty full crowd here in charlotte at the bank of america stadium for the duke's mayo bowl again winner getting doused in mayo uh <laughs> maybe we don't want to win because i don't want that to happen to me tails never fails except for in the mayo bowl where everything is upside down we lose the toss and it looks like we're going to be actually kicking it off as there's a just a five mile an hour wind on the day jones will get us underway to start this game and if you haven't already seen it the version 17 of the college football revamped mod is out and it includes this beautiful new score bug which is so so fantastic and true to life so kudos again to the CFB revamp team because they did such a phenomenal job in setting that one up. Uh, okay, stepping back to pass is Minnesota and it's a big completion on the first play of the game. 29 yards to Andrew Smith as they are already across midfield. One thing you might notice is that maybe not the stadium has been fully updated because there are Belk Bowl graphics all over the place, but we can live with that. They're going to step back to throw again. We are covering it well with Fox, and it's just kind of a coverage throwaway for Howard Bryant. So a good stop for the defense. I'm really curious to see uh, what these guys end up doing if they run the ball at all. We're hoping that they do on this play because I'm bringing a ton of pressure trying to step up somebody's gonna be open there it is oh no i just missed with walters should have been third and long instead it's a first down just outside the red zone i would love for minnesota to run but when is it gonna happen i can't afford to keep blitzing and having them pass for so much on us this one another one thrown away so our coverage kind of holds and then it breaks down and then it kind of holds and then breaks down again every fiber of my being wants to blitz on this play 
but I just can't bring myself to do it. And of course they do hand it off and it's the quarterback keeping it on the read option. We do get a big hit on him and force the third down, but we also gave up nine yards. I guess it's good to know that this quarterback is willing to run early in this game. We'll see what we can do as this one is going to be another option keeper for the quarterback and the blocking is phenomenal. <laughs> Maybe he was showboating a little bit. That should have been a walk-in touchdown, but it's a first and goal. Well, how do we stop this option? Quarterback steps back to throw that time. Well, the option didn't matter. Just throw it to the tight end. And just like that, Minnesota, after a minute of gameplay, is in for six. All right. Well, maybe the offense can respond. Again, I'm not feeling too confident. I feel like this game could be... Uh, maybe one where we crash back down to earth after having a pretty spectacular season. But we'll see what the offense has in store for us. Certainly one thing that would be pretty important is getting our running game going. Is it looks like they want to bring pressure. I should send guys deep here is my thought. We're going to do a little bit of hot routing here and see if we can't catch them off guard. Just need enough time for Albert to be able to throw as the game has given me tutorials like I haven't been playing for decades. Mitchell comes down with it and it's going to be a one play touchdown. Nobody near him. And just like that, man, they scored in a minute. We scored in 13 seconds. Albert Johnson throwing a dot on that play. And just like that, it's a tie ball game. What an absolutely beautiful response. And maybe we won't be crashing down to earth, but just going more and more to the moon. Albert Johnson woke up and said, new year, new me. And it, she turned it on. Oh my gosh, I might have just woken up all of my neighbor's in the entire neighborhood, but absolutely worth it. Let's see if the defense can keep this hype going. Oh my gosh. Don't look at the scores below. I think I just saw something absolutely crazy for our playoffs. Something that wouldn't be expected. Uh, but I guess you could just pay attention down below. Uh, and I'm seeing more crazy things. Apparently, our bowl game is being played after uh, all of the, uh, the first round playoffs games which is very interesting. Flea Flicker from Minnesota, and it's complete for 27 yards. They're bringing out the triggeration in the bowl game, and it's working. I really am in so much danger of waking up my dang neighbors. This one a run out towards the edge. Carter just barely missing it. This one likely going to be a touchdown. It's going to be a big tackle. Eric Lane can't get it, and they just step out of bounds, but it's first and goal at the one after a 36-yard pickup. The biggest problem is that uh, I don't know if our offense can continue to respond the way that they did that first drive. Obviously, we got to hope, but I'm not confident either way. First and goal from the one for Minnesota. They will step back to throw and will force the quarterback to throw it away. So another incompletion. And I will sell out to stop the run here. If they want to pass the ball, so be it. But I don't want to allow them to run it into the end zone and... oh. Well, we stopped the quarterback on the option, but Chad Smith, or yeah, Chad Smith gets the pitch out to him. Gets the ball pitched to him. Sentences are hard. Minnesota scored either way. Who cares? Oh, man. We have had two minutes and one second of gameplay, and we've seen three touchdowns already. This is insane. I would be lying if I said I didn't want to try to run a flea fl flicker of our own, but I know for a fact that that just would not work. So instead... We'll try a little triple option and have Albert Johnson keep it. Oh, if he's a faster quarterback, that could have been six, but we'll take a first down here regardless. I am aware that that's like a pseudo word, but I like saying it anyways. How about another read option? We're going to start cheesing them until they learn to respect Albert Johnson. Oh my gosh. Like I said, new year, new me for the big boy. Albert already pretty hot. Can we catch these guys off guard? Oh, no, I just threw a pick. If Mitchell wasn't on a curl, or if I threw that with actually good timing, that was going to be really good. Uh, I just threw it too late. And that's a shame. Well, I think this might be where it all comes tumbling down. <laughs> Can the defense get a stop is the real question. They're going to hand this one off out towards the edge. We've cut him north, but the blocking is good for them, and the tackling is bad for us. It's, uh, it's going to be rough if we can't stop the running game whatsoever. There's one up the middle. We do get the tackle early, but give up four yards. How about on this one? Expecting a pass, second and six. They step back to throw over the middle to catch 20 yards downfield, first and goal. We even brought in the nickel to try and stop the passing a little bit easier. 
And I don't know if it's doing a dang thing for us. Quarterback in the end zone. Fox dropped the interception. You got to hold on to those in a game like this. I don't know if we're going to get many more opportunities to create turnovers. So that one certainly hurts. This one's going to be a run. I kind of bit on the fake. Or what I thought was going to be a fake in an option. They hand it off up the middle. And it's all too easy. Untouched into the end zone. Minnesota takes a 14-point lead. Uh, dang it. I accidentally uh, selected to return. Uh, so we'll just take a touchback, I guess. And that was a returnable ball, so that sucks. I kind of feel like this uh, episode could end up being really, really long. Recording-wise, we're already 30 minutes in. Uh, and we're in the first quarter. Normally, these take like an hour total. Oh, this could be big. Gets the pitch out. Uh, Finch Jr. not able to make a whole lot with the little bit of space he was given. They're not really showing a whole lot of pressure. So we're just going to run up the middle. See what we can do. The blocking. Yeah, it was all right. We got ourselves a third and one. We can make something out of that. I think it's big just to remember that we're working with Albert at the end of the day. So we can't pass too much. I always fall into that trap. I don't fall. Oh, no. He missed the block. That was a first down. Instead, it's fourth and three. And here's our first big controversial decision of the day. We're going to go for it. Motion, wide receiver, uh, triple option. Mark Morris is going to be the pitch man. Can we get the three yards? Getting the pitch out. Mark Morris has some space. He had a little bit of a block. And that puts us near midfield. So the drive will stay alive. And most importantly, the defense gets to continue to rest. Anything I can do to avoid throwing the football on this drive, I'm going to take as Durham Finch Jr. gets a good carry up the middle for eight yards. I always feel like I say I try to avoid passing literally the play before I start to throw a pass, but we're going to do it anyways. Stepping back, looking over the middle, we have McCallo. McCallo? We have Michael. Uh, we found him for 14 yards. Albert's third pass attempt of the day. He's got a touchdown and an interception on the other two. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, home run or strikeout, it seems like, for him. That run didn't work out. Jerome Simmons, he's getting the short end of the stick right now, running the ball. And on second and 10, we'll try it again. Another counter. When Jerome ran it, we didn't hit the block. This time we do. And Durham gets five. And that is going to be the end of the first quarter. We won't get another playoff here. Uh, but you guys will get to see, again, if you didn't see my update video, the new transition that the revamp team put in. Again, kind of mimicking the exact one that ESPN has this year. And every time I see it, I get super excited. Uh, maybe the spacing and letters could have been better, but I love it. So we have uh, third and five that we get to work with, and I will step back to throw on this one. I like my options, and this is going to be not the right one. Well, if you go for it on 4th and 3 from your own, like, 35, but not on 4th and 5 from their 27, I don't know. What does that mean? <laughs> We're going to try it anyways. Seeing if we can find somebody looking for Curtis over the middle. He catches it. Linebacker couldn't make the dive. Drive stays alive again. One thing is certain. We've definitely changed the pace of this game on this drive. Uh, this is a 2 minute and 55 second drive so far, and we are... Well, we could be pretty far from over. Durham Finch Jr., another good carry up the middle for six. I think maybe shrinking the clock could work in our favor. All it takes is the defense getting one stop, though, and they were so close on the last drive. Dropped pick away. Thought the spin move was going to do more there. Now it's third and yeah, a ways to go. And we're going to try a swing screen. I like the way that this looks, huh? Uh, as they're lined up. We'll see. Can we get it to Curtis? Can he get the blocking? The blocking is there. Is it good enough? Not good enough for the first down. Fourth and two. Oh, if Curtis is faster, that's a touchdown. Unfortunately for us, he's not faster. So it's another fourth down attempt. We're two and two on the drive. Can we make it three and three? The handoff up the middle of the Durham Finch. There's nowhere to go. He's going to be swallowed up in the backfield. The loss of three. And the Golden Gophers will take over with great, well, actually terrible field position. <laughs> the end of that drive, uh, all that we accomplished was, well, we burned the clock quite a bit. I'm bringing pressure. This is going to be a run, right? Up the middle. Can we do anything? Well, I can just continue to have bad user and missed tackles, I guess. It's kind of hard for me to state how much uh, not scoring on that drive matters. 
Uh, if this is 21-14, it's a whole nother ball game. They're going flea flicker again, these sons of bitches. And, well, at least it's incomplete. <laughs> they don't have a lot of space to pick up. Uh, and I'm going to try not to let them pick it up at all. I'm bringing the pressure again. This one's going to be a handoff. We're there with Thomas. And it's going to be a three and out. So the defense does hold. It's just a shame they did it after we didn't score with the offense. That's going to allow us to send Corey Poole back to return. He's already taken a couple of punts to the house this season. He's going to need fantastic blocking, but at the very least, he should get us pretty solid field position. Eh, we're starting to cross midfield. That's better than uh, what we'll expect for probably the rest of the game. So there's three minutes and 35 seconds left in this first half. Uh, we're probably going to try and use all of that on this drive. Durham Finch broke a tackle and it kind of hurt him. I think he lost a yard of uh, forward progress. At least he did go forward. We're going to throw in another triple option. I think utilizing the option is going to be big for us to get uh, anywhere in this game. And it works out once again. Albert getting another first down with his legs. Thought that I called a different play, but I think I hit the wrong button. So we'll just run it up the middle with Durham again. And oh, it looked like there was a cap that close quickly. And Durham took a shot. All right, now we can run the play that we wanted. Put Simmons on the wheel route and we'll see what we can do. Can we bring Wilson over? I like the whip route going all the way across the field for some reason. We'll see how this works out. Stepping back to throw. Wilson's going to be open. John catches it. He breaks the first tackle and gets us a third and one as we're nearing two minutes left in the half. Oh, a three on third downs is not great so far. Back in four down territory though. And it doesn't matter because we do finally convert and get inside the red zone. I think it's just every time after an update to the mod, the game like resets all of the, uh, the tool tips that pop up, which is a little bit annoying, but... So be it. Outside the pocket, Y is going to be wide open. Curtis into the end zone. Slant route, maybe a little bit OP, maybe a little bit cheesy, but I'm going to do it so that we can stay in this game. Uh, the problem is I think we might have left a little bit too much time on the clock here. A minute and 41 left in this second quarter for Minnesota to try and do some work. Or oh, Okay, I got a little bit worried they were going to take that the distance. We managed to keep them a decent spot uh, inside the 25 so we'll take that as they will step back to throw pool with the interception and everything in this game has changed oh Corey pool it looked like he got burned that the but the quarterback just kind of under through the route that's our 20th turnover of the season for the defense and right now we have a chance to tie things up on top of all of that we get the ball to start the third quarter so this could be absolutely huge we're going to throw a short one to Jerome Simmons. Let him get a first down. That'll stop the clock for us. And I've set up with this swing screen again. This time to Morris. And yeah, I like it again. So we're going to try it. Just because I'm curious to see if we can really get it to work. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not good. I don't know if you guys noticed that. But Albert did like a 360 no scope to complete the pass, which is pretty sick. They're bringing pressure send Wilson deep one deep safety he's going to the right I gotta just get get it up Wilson yo he couldn't come down with it in his hands but the defender knocks it free that would have been a really incredible catch unfortunately now it's third of really long third and 13 hard for us to deal with to begin with added pressure uh this is not gonna be good Morris oh my gosh he came down with that let's take a timeout we gotta regroup <laughs> that might have been the longest slant route in football history as <laughs> we got him on the opposite side of the field. And again, we'll just continue to keep passing the ball outside the pocket. I'll, okay, well, I tried to throw it away, but Albert took way too long. That's uh, that's a bummer. I hit the button and everything. He just didn't want to throw it away. Clock's moving and it's second and 18. I think we might be out of field goal range as we have to try and force something and it's picked off. Ah, that's frustrating. That is really frustrating. And we just got called for a face mask on top of it. You hate to see it. That there was, uh, well, that was our chance to maybe win the game. And we blew it. Two interceptions on the day so far. That doesn't help. 
as that's going to be a complete little out route for 11 yards. Not super worried about Minnesota yet. They might be able to get a field goal out of this, but I don't think we'll give up a touchdown. 13 seconds. They do have all their timeouts. I think it's supposed to be a screen quarterback. All the time in the world, he takes a sack for some reason, and then they take a timeout. Not really sure what that was about. Uh, second and 14, though, and now they're just going to dump it short. We make it third and two. They take another timeout, and we can just send out the prevent D now. Make sure that they don't heave up a Hail Mary into the end zone. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they try to throw in another trick play. I won't expect it, but maybe we could get an interception. Thomas, no, Blair gets the interception. Oh, he could have had a convoy going the other way. It's a real shame our, turn to, our two turnovers don't feel quite as important as theirs do as uh, we will come to the end of the half. Down a touchdown, but getting the ball to start the third quarter. Uh, man, the way the game started, it looked like it was going to be just a shootout, and then it looked like we were going to get decimated, and then now it looks like we have a chance, so hopefully we don't get our hearts broken in this second half. It will certainly be a bit of a battle, uh, but we just got to, I don't know, keep control of the football. No more mistakes from Albert throwing the ball. A uh, decent little bit of running, maybe a good option here or there. And then, I don't know, one stop from the defense. That could be enough for us to have a chance. Let's see. Can we finish out our season with a nice W? Pool's going to be back to return. The wind will be at Minnesota's kicker's back. Uh, but this is a surprisingly returnable ball, so we're going to bring it out of the end zone. I like what I'm seeing in Corey Poole continuing to make big plays. That might have been a penalty. He gets the stiff arm cheese. No block in the back, and it's a 75-yard return. It turns out to be a fantastic decision to bring it out of the end zone because we're starting this drive from the Minnesota 27-yard line. And Albert's going to keep it and put a little move on a guy. Albert inside the 10, rumbling and stumbling his way for 19 yards. I figured it was worth not sliding down because if, even if he gets injured, it's the last game of the season. And we got to do everything we can to try and win this one. We're not into the end zone yet, but all I can think of right now is just how big it would have been to score at the end of the last half. Would have given us a chance to take the lead, but we can tie it up. A good Jerome Simmons run. The blocking was absolutely impeccable on that play. And it's going to be 21 all. Well, if nothing else, we've put up a respectable fight. We've hung around for now over a half. Uh, and even if they start to blow us out, it won't be the worst bowl game that we could have played. Time to see if the defense, though, can figure things out. I could see a run on this first down. It's a little counter. Walters gets the good stop. Surprising open field tackle, honestly, and they only get three. Now I'm just going to be questioning what the pass coverage could do because I know that they're going to start to pass the ball more. Step back on this one over the middle. It's complete but short of the line to gain. So a third and one. Maybe a chance at a three and out. Yeah, and we are going to bring a little bit of a blitz here. Maybe not the biggest one, but it could be enough to get the stop. It's a handoff up the middle and we had no pressure. At least not enough to get the stop on that play. All right, another first and 10. What can we do? This one, a handoff. It was out towards the edge, and then he cut it to the inside, and there's nowhere for Chad Smith to go. What can we do on this one? Second and nine. Is this going to be another counter? It is. Thomas, huge tackle up and Chad Smith. And a third and five, we have a chance to actually stop. The real question is just going to be, can we do enough? Stepping back with Poole into coverage, trying to cover corner routes, and quarterback's hit as he's throwing it. Maybe would have had enough, but it's fourth and five, and the defense holds. Poole has already had a decent day returning the ball. I got to imagine this being from about midfield. Well, they could fake it, uh, but otherwise, I expect this to be a touchback. Poole not even going to attempt to return it. This will bounce out of the back of the end zone, and we'll get the ball on offense. Start to work from the 20-yard line. Let's just get back to running the football quite a bit here, huh? Jerome Simmons up the middle on first down has worked pretty well. That time only two yards as he just kind of ran into a wall. And it's not going to stop us quite yet. Second and eight, handing it off again. They are bringing a lot of pressure on these runs, but if we slip through, 
It looks awfully dangerous. There's nine more for Jerome. How about a tough little uh, play action? I'm not super confident about this since play action seemed to be our downfall. Oh, I panicked and threw that. Thank goodness Curtis was open. I thought we were about to just get absolutely drilled. Uh, let's not do any of... The oh, okay. I was going to say let's not do any of that passing nonsense, but look at what they want to try to bring. Uh, so we're going to send Wilson and Mitchell deep. We're going to keep Robertson as a blocker, and we're going to see maybe if this works. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't expect that to be a, a play action, so that was a little bit weird. Again, like the last completion that we had, that was a bit of a panic throw. Uh, just, I just didn't trust. As we're going to go slip screen, I don't think this is a wise decision. Jerome made the most of it, though, and it's a first down as we approach midfield. I have two goals on this drive now. The first, get this into the end zone, and the second, get it into the fourth quarter. If we shrink the clock, we might actually have a chance to win this game. That was Stan Williams getting his first carry of the day. Nothing doing on it. And Durham Finch will come back in for this second and 10 run. Attempt up the middle. Yeah, that was kind of weird. I accidentally moved my stick to the left and maybe threw him out of balance. Well, this is a tough decision. We're in four down territory for sure, but I don't feel confident throwing the ball. We got our starting running back in. We got a counter to run. A block picked up, and Durham Finch getting a first down and a little bit more. Woo! If you're Minnesota, maybe time to start getting a little bit worried. If they're not going to be able to stop the run on plays like that, they could be in big trouble. I'll expect them to stuff this one. No, they focus on Albert on the read and allows us just to give it to Jerome. There's a flag down. This has got to be a hold, right? It's worse. It's an unnecessary clipping. It's the tight end getting called for that one. That hurts. Now it's first and 13. Takes away a huge play for us. And we're going to have to try and pass on this one. They are bringing some pressure over the middle. We've got Robertson and the fullback getting involved. Almost gets us that first down back. Albert. I mean, he has two picks and two interceptions. Uh, But other than that, Albert has... Two touchdowns and two interceptions uh, in a solid amount of yards. So you take away those couple of picks, uh, which one of them is entirely my fault. It's looking okay. Remember, this is kind of our tryout game. We're going to be joining Minnesota in the Big Ten next season. So if we can hang with them after the only teams they lost to were really good, I don't know. I'm feeling really confident. That's actually going to... And our third quarter as well. So into the fourth we will go. Well, maybe one day. We'll just watch this huddle for a while. There we go. Into the fourth we go here in this Duke's Mayo Bowl. All tied up. Nobody knows who's getting the Mayo bath yet. I just hope it's not me. Except I also do hope it's me. 21 all. Six more minutes to play. I got to remember, ball security is key here, so no risky passes and no risky pitches either. Although we are running the triple option, we'll hand it off to Robinson and Jeremy. Or no, Pat. Ah, I always get that mixed up. Pat Robinson gets us a third in inches. And I got to say, uh, is this four down territory? No, I would kick a field goal here just to take the lead in the fourth quarter. I think that's important, but we won't need it because Stan Williams is certainly... Going to get that first down. Maybe felt a little bit more confident than I should have, but it works out in our favor. This drive is just uh, got to be brutal. I think at this point, we have certainly worn down the Minnesota defense. They've been on the field for a long time. As Again, Albert just can't get rid of it. Throw the ball away, Albert. Throw it away. Oh, my goodness. Second and 21 now. We're half a mile from the end zone. We got it. rely on some big plays here. This could be one of them. A pitch out to Stan Williams. And Stan Williams makes the move. Jukes out the safety. And he's into the end zone. And just like that, we go from the really disappointing play to incredibly hype play. And of course, it's Stan Williams. The late game heroics continue for him. We take a touchdown lead with 451 left in this game. Well, it's up to the defense now. If they can get a stop... That might be all she wrote. Oh, this is great news. They muffed the... What? They muffed the kick return and then stumbled down. They're inside the 10. 
I might get caught out here, but I'm bringing everything. They're at the six-yard line to start this drive. We know this is going to be a run. We're bringing all the pressure. No, they step back to pass. Couldn't get to the quarterback in time. Man is wide open over the middle. And now it's just kind of like they got their normal uh, kick return. I wonder if we would have got there if I didn't bring the man who was supposed to be covering that tight end. We almost got there, though, so I would say it was worth the risk, and it would have been huge as well. And... Okay, now we're in trouble. This is kind of what I've uh, been expecting from their offense all game long. I'm just surprised we haven't seen more of it. This one, a toss to the edge. Carter was there to slow him down, and Fox does a good job shutting the play down. Every second that ticks away off of this clock is, I think, beneficial to us. The less game there is to play, the better. Quarterback, again, having to throw it away. Our coverage has been really good. I guess to be fair to our secondary, they did all pretty much make the uh, the all-MAC conference team. So we should expect them to be pretty solid. Uh, I got burned and then made a good tackle somehow. It's fourth and six. Minnesota's probably going to have to go for this. I'm not that confident on whether uh, we can get this stop, but we'll see. Huge play, a lot on the line. Oh, wide open over the middle is the running back. We just didn't put anybody there and they convert the fourth down. Everything else was covered pretty dang well, except for that check down. So new life for the Golden Govers. This time, another run out towards the edge. Eric Lane drags him down. Again, just a pickup of a yard. I would say we're doing a really surprising job of holding the edge on those runs. It's the ones up the middle that we get into trouble. This one to throw over the middle is complete for a big one. That's inside the red zone, down to about the 12. And it's here where I'm going to try and bring a little bit of pressure. See if we can get the safeties in and involved in this pass rush. Expecting a pass, of course, but they could run it. Three minutes, 15 seconds on the clock. They burned quite a bit off of that one. And this one, again, quarterback throwing it away as he felt the pressure. I'm not certain if this is just a quarterback that's overly cautious or if he's just not good, but he's given those ones up pretty quickly on plays ooh, where it doesn't seem like a lot's going for it. And now it's third and nine. We know that we have two plays in which we need to stop them. But if we could hold them on this third down, it would make fourth down a lot easier. Getting some pressure, he's going to have his running back over the middle, of course. And then we give up yards after the catch, so it's first and you want the one. That might be worst case scenario. But could they be giving this the ball with too much time? A field goal might be enough to win it here. Again, making the quarterback throw one away. He's already got two interceptions on the day. Maybe there's a chance we could force another one as we are in the goal line, but the goal line zone because we know that they like to pass this one to toss towards the edge. Lane can't get there, but the blocking is just too good for the Golden Gophers. And it's Mike Newell, one of the backups coming in to tie this game up inside three minutes. All right. Well, I can't return this kick, but we'll see who's back there. I expect Corey Poole. And he's going to have a chance to return it as well. Wind was in the face of the kicker on that one. We do have the tailwind at our back, which is nice. We're starting from the 19. So not a long time to work with, but a long ways to go. I would be comfortable with a 40-yard field goal, although we need to be centered up because I don't feel confident making that while we're iced. But it also wouldn't take a lot to do a whole lot. They're going to leave Curtis wide open here. Is this the biggest mistake you've ever seen, or is it the biggest mistake you've ever seen? We're across midfield with two minutes to get inside field goal range. Oh, they can't be doing that. Albert making the throw while getting hit. That is a thing of beauty. We have struggled to pass the ball this well against MAC conference opponents. And here we are. Albert Johnson, 210 passing yards with a decent amount of time left to play. Superman Stan just came in and picked up another big run. And now it's time for Robinson to get a carry. There's some decent blocking out towards the edge. And Robinson has another first down as we are inching closer and closer to that field goal range. The thing is, I'm not going to stop running the ball. I'm, I'm just, I don't know if it's that I'm worried about throwing picks or what, but why should we go away from it when it's working so well? Well, I will tell you right now, the thumbnail is going to have Stan Williams and he's going to have a Superman cape because that is exactly who we're seeing right now. So I will step back to throw. We're just going to go the quick little curl to Mitchell, get ourselves another first down to work with. And we're inside field goal range. Time to just burn the clock. 
I'll be curious to see if Minnesota is smart enough to take their timeouts because uh, we got no reason not to just center this ball up. We can do a little bit better job than that, but that'll work. And this is going to be us with a chance to walk it off on the field goal. Hand off. There we go up the middle. Stan Williams. Oh my gosh. He just doesn't miss. Maybe you would think that I should just continue to run the ball. But why take any chances with a fumble? There's no reason. We're going to take the time out here with three seconds remaining on the clock. They're going to ice us on the 29-yard field goal attempt. But guess what? The anti-freeze skill activated. They take their second timeout. And the anti-freeze skill doesn't work that time. So kind of a shame. Can we break it with the timeout? Yeah, screw it. If we're just taking timeouts, I want to get involved in that. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. Clark with a six mile an hour, uh, kind of tail, kind of crosswind. It's going to have to just put this one straight down the middle. We got all of it. Oh, it's moving a little bit left, but the wind should push us right. And as the clock expires, we are going to walk it off 31 to 28 to win the Mayo Bowl. Oh, man. I'm honestly tempted to douse myself in Mayo. Uh, but uh, I don't know. That would take like 2,000 likes on the video for that to happen. <laughs> Regardless, there we are getting lifted up. An ESPN Classic game in the bowl game. Albert Johnson with the play of the game. Our second play from offense and an absolute thing of beauty. What a nice move from Mitchell there. Just fakes out the defender and is home free. Ooh, this one was back and forth. This was a great bowl game. I loved it. Maybe not so much if you're Minnesota, but for us, that is a great way to cap off the season as we go 12-2, and two, including a conference championship. Uh, I mean, come on. You, you think Big Ten, after seeing that, they're going to invite us. The question is, will being in the Big Ten give us enough? Sean Mitchell, player of the game with that big catch and the touchdown. And, well, we're going to be playing for bigger things next year. And now all that we have left to do on the season is see how the playoffs shape up. Man, just such a great way to end the season. We end up out rushing and out passing Minnesota. Uh, tied them on the turnover differential, so that's nice. But where we really won the ball, I think, is with our time of possession. Uh, when the game started... And we were trying to match Minnesota in pace is where it seemed like they were doing really well. I mean, they scored 21 first quarter points. Uh, but then after we slowed things down, they scored seven points for the rest of the game. And it came there in the fourth quarter pretty late. So we slowed things down. We got things uh, to our tempo. We tired out their defense. We let our defense rest. And we were able to win that game. Sean Mitchell was the overall player of the game in our offensive and it's Frank Blair with, uh, well, he's defensive player of the game. He does, that's not, no. He, his interception was on the Hail Mary at the end of the half, and he had three tackles. Some decent tackles, but uh, I disagree with that. I think, if anything, Corey Poole actually did deserve it this time. So we win the Dukes Mayo Bowl. Again, what, I don't know, whatever number, 2,000, I think I said likes on the video, and I'll, like, I'll, I'll dunk myself with some mayo. I don't know how much mayo it'll be but <laughs> it would be an absurd amount of likes. So I think I would do it. That might be worth it for that much. Certainly wouldn't be the most humiliating thing I've done on the internet. That is for sure. The great end to our season though, is we do finish 12 and two, and that should allow us to jump up in the final polls. But unfortunately that is gonna have to do it for this episode. We will sim through the playoffs and then maybe start doing some off season or the whole off season in our next episode. So again, if you want to get in and be a recruit, uh, look into becoming a channel member, you get that and you also can help show some support for the channel. Another way you can do that though, is of course liking the video, which I'm assuming if you want the mayo bath, you'll do. Uh, and then subscribe if you haven't already so that you can be notified when that happens, I guess. After that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. It's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the College Football Revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Gray Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.